A common question that I keep receiving from you is why do you invest in REITs instead of rental properties? It seems that a lot of you are confused about the benefits of investing in REITs. Many of you appear to think that REITs must be less rewarding because you don't enjoy the same benefits of leverage, you don't have the same tax advantages, and then you must give a cut of the profits to a manager as well. Then on top of that, some of you also appear to think that REITs are riskier than rental properties because they are traded in the form of stocks, which leads to high volatility. So why buy REITs if they offer lower returns with higher risk? It doesn't seem to make any sense. Hey everyone, this is Yossi. I run a small investment firm that specializes in REIT investing. And in today's video, I'm gonna first explain to you why I believe that REITs are far more rewarding than rental properties in most cases. Then in a second section, I'm also gonna explain to you why REITs are safer than rental properties. And then finally, in a third section, I'm gonna explain to you why I believe that REITs today especially have a lot more to offer to investors than rental properties. But before I get into it, could you please do me a huge favor and like this video, it really helped me a lot to grow this channel. Thank you so much for all your support. So the first section here is going to cover why REITs are more rewarding than rental properties. This section is going to be by far the longest because this subject is also the most complicated. Here it's important that we start by correcting a few important misconceptions because otherwise you won't understand my reasoning in the rest of this section. The first misconception that I want to address here is that of leverage. Rental property investors appear to think that REITs must be less rewarding because you can't use a mortgage to buy them. But what these investors appear to ignore here is that REITs are already leveraged investments. When you buy shares of a REIT, you're providing the equity to it, the equivalent of a down payment. The REIT then takes this equity, adds some debt on top of it, so in the form of a mortgage or some bonds that are publicly listed or some convertible debt, some preferred equity. REITs have access to lots of sorts of capital, but REITs are leveraging your equity and then buying properties with it. This means that you enjoy the same benefits of leverage when investing in REITs, but in fact, it's even better with REITs because you're not personally liable for the debt and the REIT may be able to get better terms on the financing that you could because it's a large, diversified, professionally managed, SEC regulated entity and so lenders will be more willing to work with this type of entity than a small rental property investor. Then the second misconception is that of the management cost. Yes, it is true that REITs are paying millions to their top executives, but despite that, the management cost of REITs is actually quite a bit more efficient than that of private properties and this is because of the huge economies of scale that they enjoy. REITs will commonly own hundreds or even thousands of properties and as a result they can afford to hire the best talent, pay them generously and despite that the total salaries as a percentage of the total assets is going to be very small. Taking here the example of Realty Income, which is one of the most popular REITs in the world, its management cost as a percentage of its total assets is only 0.3%. In comparison, the management cost of a private property is in most cases gonna be a lot more expensive. If you outsource the management to a property management company, they are likely gonna take about 10% of your rental income on the revenue level. And then if you do it yourself, it's likely going to be even more expensive if you now give some value to all your time and effort. Then the third misconception is that of taxes. Rental property investors think that REITs are less rewarding because they don't enjoy the same tax benefits. It is true that rental properties are very tax efficient. This is in large part thanks to non-cash depreciation, which allows them to lower their profits and defer their taxes. But what investors here appear to ignore is that REITs enjoy very similar benefits that allow them to defer most of their taxes into the future. First of all, most REITs will typically retain about 30 to 40% of their cash flow to reinvest in growth. All of this cash flow is preserved at the REIT level and therefore it's not taxed because REITs don't pay any corporate income tax. Then secondly, a portion of the dividend income that REITs pay out will typically be classified as return of capital, which is fully tax deferred. Then thirdly, the portion of the dividend income that's going to be taxed is also going to enjoy a 20% tax deductible. Then fourth, it's important to remember here that REITs are mostly investing in lower yielding, higher growth properties. Some of the biggest property segments in the REIT market are things like e-commerce warehouses, data centers, cell towers, self-storage properties. And so these typically don't earn quite as much income today, but they enjoy faster growth prospects and larger long-term appreciation and all of that is also tax deferred. And then fifth and finally, if all of this still isn't enough for you, you could of course put your REITs in a tax deferred account, defer all taxes and enjoy great flexibility. 
And then the fourth and final misconception that I want to address here is I often see rental properties investors claim that they're earning 20, 25 or even 30 percent annual total returns when in reality I believe that they are miscalculating their returns. Here it's good to remember that Warren Buffett became the richest investor on earth by compounding the returns of Berkshire Hathaway at about 20 percent annually. I don't buy into the idea that your average rental property investor is going to be beating Warren Buffett because otherwise we would have far more rental property billionaires. In reality, I think that most investors are miscalculating their returns in two ways. The first one is that they will put significant time and effort working on their property investment and they will then assume that all of this work is free. They will put countless hours looking for the right deal, negotiating it, financing it, renovating it, marketing it, and then finding the tenant, uh, managing the property and so on. And they will assume that all this labor has no cost. In reality, you could have used all this productive time to work extra hours at your job or worked on a side hustle you would have earned money and therefore there's a real opportunity cost here that you cannot ignore if you now came up with a realistic estimate of the amount of hours that you spend on your property gave for each hour a dollar amount of value let's say thirty dollars per hour for for the sake of this example and you then deducted all of this from your returns you would see them come down very significantly and so if let's say you're calculating that you're earning a 20 percent annual total return in reality half of that may come from your labor and then the other half is actually coming from your invested capital and then the second mistake that investors will make when calculating their returns is that they will simply look at their typical good year as if that was going to be their average future results in reality when you invest in real estate you occasionally have to heavily reinvest in your property and so you may earn good and steady returns for eight years and then on the ninth year you may have to heavily reinvest in your property losing a year or even two of rental income and so if you averaged out your returns over this 10-year period you'll see your average returns come down very significantly. So with these misconceptions out of the way we can now look at some research studies that compare the performance of REITs versus that of private real estate and private equity real estate funds. I'll put some of these studies on the screen here right now and you'll see there that the results are quite consistent. REITs tend to outperform by about 2 to 4 percent per year annually. This outcome may seem surprising to some of you, but it's actually very much expected. REITs are more rewarding investments because of several reasons. The first thing here, we touched on it already previously, is that the management cost of REITs is far lower than that of rental properties in most cases. But then secondly, REITs also enjoy economies of scale on all other levels. Here we could take the example of an apartment REIT that does a deal with a contractor in a specific city to change 100 carpets each year. It's of course going to get a much better rate than you if you go to the same contractor to change one or two corporate every year. The same economies of scale apply on every level. REITs will pay lower brokerage fees. REITs will have the legal team in-house, which will allow them to fight property tax increases. I mean, this really applies to every single level. Then thirdly, REITs will commonly develop their own properties, earning even higher returns in the process. They're able to do so because they have some of the best talent in the real estate space working for them. They have great skills and great resources. Then fourth, REITs have better access to capital. REITs can issue some preferred equity, they can issue some bonds, some convertible debt, they can take regular mortgages and so on. And being able to access such a large variety of capital allows them to optimize their cost of capital and minimize their risk. Then REITs can also use their platforms to enter other real estate related businesses to earn additional profits. To give you an example here, Farmland Partners, which is one of the biggest farmland owners in the US, also has a brokerage business. And so it's helping some third parties sell their farmland and it's earning fees in the process. Then REITs also enjoy stronger bargaining power with their tenants because they are large, widely diversified and have relationships with lots of other tenants. When you're a rental property investor, you probably own just one or a few properties. And so you're highly concentrated on a few tenants and you don't want to lose them. This is likely going 
going to make you reluctant to increase their rents but but again because REITs are in this stronger position to negotiate with their tenants they're able to push for larger rent hikes. So I would say that these are the main reasons why REITs have historically been more rewarding investments than private real estate. If we go back now the past 20 years REITs have earned about 13% average annual total returns which is even more than that of the S&P 500. And I would add that this is the average of the REIT sector. It includes the bad REITs, the average REITs and the good REITs. This means that if you were actually able to weed out the good REITs from the bad REITs you could have earned even better returns. To give you an example here the entire self-storage REIT property sector has earned nearly 20% average annual total returns over the past 30 years. I think that some rental property investors may be earning similar returns but those are exceptional. More often than not if you properly deduct the value of your labor, calculate the returns in a way that you include also the bad years, your returns are going to be quite a bit lower than those of REITs. The final point that I want to make here in this section is that there are also significant indirect costs to owning rental properties. If you own REITs you're going to enjoy their professional management and therefore you're going to be able to fully focus on your career, you're going to enjoy geographic freedom and this is going to maximize your chances of getting the next promotion and that next pay bump which is really going to get you ahead. On the other hand if you own rental properties it's going to be a big distraction, it's going to drain a lot of your energy and your time, you're also going to lose in geographic freedom so if let's say you're based in Dallas Texas and now you receive a big opportunity in New York you're going to be more reluctant to taking it because you will be leaving all your properties behind. Your career and your income is really the most important factor that's really going to get you ahead in your wealth building journey. Taking that into account I think that earning a percent or two extra by owning rental properties and working really hard on them really isn't worth it at all. Taking that into account even if you were able to earn a bit more by owning rental properties I would argue that it isn't worth it. So now we can finally go into section 2 which is going to cover why I think that REITs are quite a bit safer than rental properties. This section is gonna be quite a bit shorter because it's a lot more simple. Rental properties are private, illiquid, concentrated, highly leveraged investments that require a lot of management that also have a strong social aspect and unlimited liability. REITs on the other hand are public, they are liquid, they are diversified, professionally managed, conservatively financed in most cases and there is no social aspect and you also enjoy limited liability. So put this way I think that it's quite clear that REITs are far safer investments. But even despite all of that some investors will argue that REITs are riskier because they trade in the form of stocks which can be quite volatile. It is true that REITs can be volatile but what these investors in your here is that their rental properties are just as volatile if not more and just because you don't have a daily quote doesn't mean that the value of your property isn't changing. If today you put your property on the market and you collected daily offers you would see that you would receive 5%, 10%, 20% lower offers here and there on a regular basis. If you now have an 80% loan to value you receive a 10% lower offer than your asking price that will mean that the value of your property has dropped by 50%. If now your property loses 20% of its value and you have an 80% LTV this would mean that your equity would be totally wiped out. Here again it's important to remember that what's traded in the real market is the equity value not the total asset value and this is why it seems that REITs are so volatile but in reality if you'd now had an apple to apple comparison it's very clear that rental properties would be far more volatile than REITs. This also makes sense once more because REITs are diversified, they are very large vehicles, they are very transparent, there's a lot of information out there and on the flip side rental properties are concentrated, illiquid and obscure investments so naturally they're also going to be more volatile in their value. Then another aspect that's often ignored when discussing risks is liability. When you invest in a REIT you own shares as a minority shareholders in a limited liability corporation and therefore your liability is well protected, you're not signing on any of the loans yourself, you're not going to get sued by your tenants. But when you're a rental property investor it's very different, you're most likely going to give personal guarantees for some loans and if you have the misfortune of having some troubles with your tenants they are more likely than not also sue you personally even if you have an LLC. You may win in court but at the very least this is going to be a huge headache 
traffic. It's going to cause a lot of stress. It may ruin your career, your personal life, and it simply isn't worth it in my opinion. This liability issue is the number one reason why so many rental property investors file for bankruptcy protection each year, whereas REIT bankruptcies are extremely rare. We've only had a handful of them over the past 10 years. Once more, I think that this is clear proof that REITs are a lot safer investments than rental properties. And so now finally, we can go into our third section, which might be the most interesting to some of you. And this is going to discuss why I think that especially today, REITs have a lot more to offer than rental properties. And during most times, REITs are priced a small premium to their net asset value. And this makes sense because you enjoy the benefits of diversification, professional management, liquidity, and so on. However, on rare occasions, the performance of REITs become completely detached from the private real estate markets, and this can result in heavily discounted valuations relative to the value of the properties they own. That's the case today. REIT share prices have crashed, and according to a recent study by the investment firm Janice and Henderson, REITs are today priced at an average 28% discount to the net asset value. What this essentially means is that you get to invest in the equity of real estate properties at roughly 70 cents on the dollar through the REIT market. And I would add that this is just the average of the sector. There are quite a few REITs that are priced at even lower levels than this. A good example that I'd like to give is BSR REIT. This is a high quality apartment REIT that owns properties in the Texan Triangle of Austin, Dallas and Houston. These are highly desirable markets with very attractive long term growth prospects. The REIT also has a strong balance sheet, a good management team. And despite that, it's today priced at 60 cents on the dollar. So these low valuations are the number one reason why I think that REITs today have a lot more to offer than rental properties. Why would you go out in the private market and pay full price when you could buy REITs and get a really large discount? And then the second reason why REITs make so much more sense is because by investing in REITs, you enjoy the benefits of much lower interest rates. Most of the debt that REITs are using, it's fixed rate and it enjoys long debt maturities. Therefore, by buying shares of REITs, you're today still going to be able to enjoy the benefits of this cheaper debt that they secured in the previous years. On the flip side, if today you wanted to buy a rental property and went to your bank to get a mortgage, your quoted interest rate would likely be far higher than the average interest rate that REITs are today paying. So all in all, a much cheaper valuation with the benefits of cheaper debt, I think that's a no brainer to favor REITs today. So to conclude this unusually long video here, I think that REITs are more rewarding investments in most cases and for most investors. Then on top of that, I also think that they are far safer investments in most cases and especially today it makes far more sense to buy a REIT because they enjoy a significant margin of safety, they enjoy the benefits of lower interest rates and I think that they will offer far greater returns in the coming years as their valuations recover. Historically, whenever REITs have been priced at such large discount to the net asset values, they've been very rewarding in the future years. And this really makes logical sense because you're buying real estate at a discount to its fair value and you don't need to be a genius to understand that this should result in good returns over time. Now, if you want to access my entire real money REIT portfolio, feel free to join my REIT newsletter, High Yield Landlord, for a two week free trial. I'll put a link to it somewhere in the description of this video. And otherwise, once more, if you could like this video, that would really help me a lot to grow this channel. Thank you so much for all your support and see you at my next one. Bye-bye.